going to start with the main session now, which is about bathing and autism. Like with all of these sessions, a lot of the stuff I'll give you may be general. Um, I don't know many of your children personally, and that's what makes it quite difficult when we're doing these sessions. But I hope that you can take something from some of the things that we're going to talk about. Okay? So, for many of our individuals with autism, we know that bathing um, or showering we're going to focus on bathing today, can be a massive challenge um, and it can be for many different reasons. One of the re those reasons is sensory. So we know that a lot of our individuals will have difficulties or differences in the way that they process sensory information. So it could be that going into a bathroom, acoustically, it could be too noisy for them and they actually can't manage or process out the noises that are happening. It could be the temperature of the room. So it could be that actually going from um, quite a cold bathroom to a hot bath could be the issue. Or um, it could be that even a subtle change in temperature, so a warm bathroom to an to a even warmer bath, could be a problem for some of our young people. It could be the smell as well of the bathroom. So, you know, bathrooms are obviously often laden with kind of nice, smelly, kind of fruity or, um, you know, citrusy fruit type um, smells. That could cause an issue for some of our children. And if you think about cleaning products, so, you know, for when you're cleaning your bath out, for us, we might not notice that some of that smell still kind of resides in the air, but for individuals with autism, if they have acute processing, then they will pick up on that smell um, much easier than what you might, okay? So it might actually be smells that you can't smell, but your child can. It could be the feel of the water. So being immersed in water from a tactile point of view can be absolutely terrifying for some of our children and um, it can cause a lot of stress and a lot of confusion. Now, remember with sensory differences for some individuals that have got hypersensitivity it can actually cause a, a physical pain response so you know that can be can be um quite difficult for for some of our individuals okay think about the idea of being claustrophobic so in a bath some individuals might find that very difficult because you're in quite an enclosed space and it might be um it might be that they've got real fears around the bathtub as well so we had one boy who was terrified because at the end of the bath the water went down the plug and he believed that you know he might go down the plug hole with the water so even though it might seem a bit irrational to us for our children and our adults of course these can be real fears so we need to think about them the other reason that um, bathing may be a problem is it involves a lot of multitasking. So you've got to get in the bath, you might have to wash your hair, you might have to cope with the um, the feeling of the water and the smell of the soap and the um, the movement of the water all at the same time. You've then got to um, maybe sponge yourself down, put soap on you, put body freshener on you. It can be a lot of sensory information and for a lot of our individuals we know in terms of multitasking it's something that they can find particularly difficult so um, that in itself could kind of um, you know be problematic. You've also then got to think that the process itself of bathing is massive so it's not just about getting undressed and getting in the bath it's about everything that happens after so it's about you know getting dry with a towel then finding the right clothes putting your clothes on. Um, for some individuals that process might be so big, so so massive, they might find it quite difficult to work out where do we actually begin in this, you know, how do we get from um, getting in the bath to actually getting out the other end and being clean and dry and having our pyjamas on for example, okay. So many different reasons why we might have um, difficulties around bathing but what I want to talk to you now is some of the possible solutions or some of the possible strategies that, that you could try. Um, one of the first ones, which is something we always talk about in these Q&A sessions, is looking for potential triggers. So some of our individuals will tell us that through their behaviour or um, through um, sounds that they might make. Some of our individuals will be able to tell us verbally what is actually the problem in the bathroom and with the bath situation itself. So it's really about kind of um, reading your child. So trying to find out, is it the temperature of the water? Is it the towel that you use at the end of the, the kind of the bath? Is it the fragrance shampoo that you use? Is it the, te the temperature of the room? Is it the noise of the window being open and there's a noise outside that's causing a problem? So you'll know yourself as parents, you've got to be a little bit of a behaviour detective and you've often got to unpick things because it might be that you assume that your child's got a problem with washing the hair and it's the issue of um, they can't cope with kind of water going over the head. 
if you look at that as a whole concept, it could be that they actually can't process the smell of the shampoo that you're putting on, on the hair. So it's about really kind of breaking it down and trying to pinpoint them trigger points for them. Okay. We then look at um, our planning. So trying to plan it out for our children. So giving them a planner of what will happen now and then works really well because what you can do there is put in a reinforcer. So if we know it's something that they hate doing, which many children, you know, aren't too keen on getting in the bath, we give them a very clear now and then. So now you have a bath, then you get to go on your DVD or whatever it is. It could be that you've got to break that down even smaller. So first you wash your, your feet, then you get to, I don't know, play your wee favourite game. Okay, so you might have to actually start really, really small rather than just saying bath and then um, the reinforcer. Also think about step by step, so think about really breaking down the process of bathing. So for many of our individuals, if we say we're going to have a bath, um, and I was reading something the other day actually about a guy with Asperger's who was told, you know, you need to have a bath, and he didn't understand what that meant, so I've got to have a bath. Well, I'll get in the bath, I'll sit in the water and then I'll get out. He didn't actually understand that getting in the bath meant you actually have to wash yourself and maybe shampoo your hair and things. So it might be that you've got to break it down into tiny, tiny steps for them. Timers, again, will work well in this situation. So having a very clear defined time of how long they need to be in the bath for, because we know that um, many of our individuals might struggle with that concept of finish and that concept of, of how long. Think about, um, as well, counting down. So if you're doing um, hair washing, you know, you say 10, 10 cups of water and then it's finished. Then we do the shampoo, then 10 more cups of water and then it's finished. And try and count down with the child or the adult because that'll give them a very clear timeline of how long each little task is, is gonna last, okay? Really consider the environment, like everything within autism, we need to think about the environment. So look at the temperature of your bathroom, um, consider kind of the, um, the bath itself. So for some of our children and adults that have um, vestibular differences so problems with balance it might be that they need a mat in the bath to actually sit on because that fear of slipping is so great to them that that's actually the thing that's causing the anxiety about the bath time routine okay um, we can make the water as inviting as possible for them. Um, so this isn't going to work for everybody because for some it might actually really frighten them and really confuse them. But there's a number of different things you can do. You can actually change the colour of the water. And there's something you can um, get which is called rubber dub fizzy tints. And they're on Amazon. They're quite cheap. And you just put them in the water and they actually change the colour completely. There's, there's lots of different colours that you can try. So maybe you could experiment with that with your child. The bath bombs from Lush as well, they can change the colour um, quite considerably. There's also um, something called Crackle Bath Crackle, which is actually little, it's like a little Everessent tablet that you put in and it creates kind of a snap, crackle and pop effect in the bath. Um, so particularly children that like bubbles, that's what that would create. So it might just create a bit of excitement, a bit of interest around bath time, okay? Think about um, actually adding interest into the bath time routine. So can you add things like foam in there, um, different coloured forms for um, washing? Or you can try different containers that the child actually gets in and then they play around with them. There's also a little great set that you can get for like £1.50 on Amazon, which is like five little ducks and little nets that you can kind of hook the, hook the ducks. If you've got children that or adults that are interested in that, um, there's lots of different toys that you can get to make bath time more interesting and in, I, I mean in some way I suppose they act as distractors as well so you know you're giving them a bit of a distractor while you're actually trying to get them you know to get clean a little bit there's also bath body paints that you can get um, which again just kind of create a bit of bit of fun around bath time and, and maybe relax it a little bit and, and try and reduce a bit of that anxiety okay the other thing you can think about is if your child's got a favorite toy or a favorite um puppet or something like that using them to demonstrate what washing is so you know actually using them with a little flannel or with um, a little sponge or with the soap whatever they will tolerate doing that on the puppet or the doll first and then trying to get it to translate to your child you can also buy for children that have a problem with um and adults who, that have a difficulty with water going over their head. You can get little um, little hats, they're like little foam hats, they're called a bath shampoo shield. And what that does is it stops the water actually going in the, the eyes. They do use them quite a bit for, for little babies, but I suppose it would could be equally effective for children as well. Um, and that just having that on might create a bit of security because 
it might just get them to realise that the water won't go in their eyes and that actually makes them feel a bit safer in some way. Think about your deep pressure. So we know that deep pressure can be quite relaxing and actually can help many of our individuals feel calm. So maybe implementing your deep pressure programme before your child or your adult has a bath can actually calm them before they've got to go into that um, kind of highly stressful sensory kind of, you know, induced environment. If you've got particular difficulties, think about the towels that you're using. So it could be that the issue your child, the reason your child doesn't want to get have a bath is because of the towel that you use at the end so um it could be that the feeling of that is too hyper sensitive for them it, it makes them itchy it could be painful for them it might be something that they can't tolerate so think about using ultra absorbent towels and um, because they will absorb the water much quicker and then it actually stops them from having to um be dried for longer periods of time it's just about kind of reducing the time wherever possible also consider your um products that you're using so there's some brilliant kind of fragrance free products now for particularly for children and adults that have that kind of olfactory so your nose they have an olfactory hypersensitivity um you can think think about um you can get lots of different fragrance free kind of body washes but there's a there is one on amazon that's been recommended to me by some parents called fundamental body wash Obviously, I haven't tried it myself, but parents say that it's been really useful for some of their children. So kind of, you know, that's something else that you could try. And also this concept of a safe item, because we know that bathing can be quite an unpredictable, uh, complex, confusing time. So can they take a safe item into the bath with them? Something they feel really secure with. That could be anything from um, a twiggly piece of string to a piece of Lego to a teddy bear. Whatever it is, you know, whatever works for your children, really, or adults, of course. The other thing I came across the other day is dry shower body wash. Um, I actually picked this up from a garage down in Durham from a petrol station. Um, apparently, again, I haven't tried it, but you can cleanse without water. I'm just thinking for some of our individuals that say, you know, they're having real problems, they're completely refusing to get washed completely. Um, it could be something like this that you try. This has a pinky colour to, to it, so I imagine it's got kind of a raspberry flavour. I shall smell it. Yeah, it's got like a raspberry flavour, but I'm sure they come in lots of different flavours. Um, that might be useful, the same as as uh, baby wipes. So we've got some parents that just use baby wipes just to kind of, you know, um, get get the job done really, okay? And it might be that your child or your adult's just not at that point to be ready to actually, you know, get, in, get into the stage of actually having a bath. So it might be something you've really, really got to work up to. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there because I know there was a lot of information. There's more things that I could talk about around bathing um you know you think it's a little subject but actually when you when you look into it break it down it's actually quite big so i'm just gonna look i know some people have made comments let me see okay hi amanda hi emma thanks for joining us amanda we use lush bath bombs at times and lots of toys but my son hates the tap running and only sits in cold baths yeah absolutely some children will um actually i was talking to a parent last night whose child will only have a cold bath um some individuals with sensory differences will have differences around temperature regulation so for us even though we would never sit in a cold bath because we'd just be freezing for our children it might be that that actually could feel quite warm to them and um, because the temperature re regulation it can be quite different okay but lush bath bombs yes really nice and getting your child i suppose involved in that you know if they can tolerate the lush shot because it's very sensory overpowering when you go in there i certainly couldn't work there and um, trying to get them to play with different smells and you know get them to choose and take some control and ownership over bath time so thank you for that amanda that's fantastic um anything for water going in the ears could you use earplugs yes amanda i suppose you could i don't see why not i mean you can get the earplugs that swimmers use um so i would imagine they would be you know the best thing I suppose it's just whether or not your child will tolerate them in their ears, but I think you can get loads of different ones now, loads of different textures. I know when I used them when I was on holiday, you got one that you kind of, um, kind of scores together and it formed like a little ball and then you put it in the ear and then it expands and just covers, covers the ear enough to stop the water going in. So absolutely, I think, you know, that is something possibly you could try. Uh, 
Emma is telling us, you used to be able to buy a ring that you wore like a hat in mother care that stopped water getting in the eyes. Yeah, that's the one that I was talking about, Emma. So you can get them in mother care, as Emma's told us. Um, but also, I think you can order them on Amazon as well. The good thing with them is on Amazon is that you can get them in with different pictures on and, and different colours. So it might be, again, trying to incorporate that idea of, you know, let's make bath time as fun as we can. Although I know that's, you know, not as easy said as done. Amanda's saying, thank you, Emma. Brilliant. Hi, uh, hi, Joanne. I think you've just joined us. My 15-year-old showers and washes a lot and I'm worried it's becoming out of control. His hands are all sore. Right, okay, Joanne. Um, next week, what we're going to look at is more of the hyposensitive side of, of maybe being involved with water. So, so children and adults that are actually seeking that sensation because you will have some um, individuals that actually love the sensation of water and actually go out of the way to seek it. I suppose... With that one, what I would say is it's around querying, you know, has it become kind of an obsessional thing or is it is it a sensory seeking behaviour? So it's about kind of, it's a very fine line. It's about trying to identify and work that out. So if you want to contact me about that separately, then, you know, that's absolutely fine. Please feel free to do that. If any of that information was useful, please give us a like, give us a hello so we know you're there. Um, if you watch this video after the event, Please, if you have any comments or questions, please get in touch with us.